Hey everybody, Ed Helmut again. Um, another little tutorial video on Artivana. Uh, kind of explains some things and it, some features that I think make it unique uh, and add it, you know, add some power to Artivana. And um, you know, I think just for audio files, it's kind of an interesting thing. So we're going to go ahead and start Artivana again. And again, this is the latest version, 2.6.2.0. And my startup screen always brings me to my albums. Now, one of the things we can do, and here we have a CoBuzz file uh, that I'm going to go ahead and come to. I'm going to go ahead and pick a track. You will not hear it, but I'm going to go ahead and pick a track. And it loaded it, and it'll show it's a 24-bit 44.1, let me pause that, uh, FLAC file. So it's considered high res. If I click on the album art here in the lower left-hand corner, it'll bring up a larger version of the album art. It'll show the artist, whether or not I've favored it, give me the option of, you know, the playback function options, the time. And if I was using Art of Honor for, for volume, it would show that here. But one interesting thing is if I come up the upper left-hand corner, this little switch, it brings up the analysis uh, tool. I'm going to double-click on the header so I make it full screen. So now what I can do is I can see the waveform how compressed or, un de un un or not compressed it is. And again, the software volume control, or if my DAC had uh, volume control built in, it would show that here as well. It shows what it's loading, a 24-bit 44.1, and PCM, of course, takes that to 64.44.1. Then I'm up sampling to uh, actually 32.176, uh, and then what my DAC output is, 32.176. Now, you'll see here this frequency response analysis. I'm going to go ahead and analyze this track. And what it does is scan the audio file and it measures and looks at the bit depth. It looks at the high res. It looks at for any DC issue, any DC offset issues and things like that. And it'll give us a graph showing exactly what it is, which is, I think, kind of interesting. And it truly tells you whether or not it's high res. So expected quality was 24 bit 44.1, detected quality 24 bit 44.1, the bit depth is correct, the bandwidth is correct, stereo, and there were some DC issues which live way above where we're ever going to hear it. So it's really not an issue on this particular one. Uh, so that's an audio analysis on this particular track. Now let me show you where you can catch out your streaming services on whether or not it's truly high res. So we're going to come down here. Boris Blank is one of the guys from the band Yellow. Uh, oh, yeah. And so we're going to pick this track, Electrified. And I'm going to go ahead and play it. And then I'll pause it real quick. You can do it while it's playing, too. I'm just going to pause it because there's no point. If I click on the album art, it brings me up to that same uh, screen. Click on this, and it brings me to the audio track analysis. And if I go ahead, and, and it shows you know compression, so forth and so on. It said... If we go back, sorry, let me go back one, back one. It says, Cobus says, this is an HD file down here in the center. You'll see where the cursor is. Well, let's check and see if it truly is. So again, we're going to go ahead and scan the file. This one will go fast. And its detected quality was 2488, but what it truly was is an MP3 at 320 kilobits per second. So it isn't really a... Uh, 2488 file. So, so sometimes the record companies will tag in the data in the file header for that particular track or album that it's high res, but when you analyze it, it ain't. So that's kind of an interesting thing to see. Let me show you another one, just as an example. Just as an example, uh, let me go back here. All right, here's a title, uh, Taj Mahal's first album, by the way, great album. And it shows this HD, and it is, if I go here and start playing, as a matter of fact, I'm having, uh, because I had to change screens resolutions for this video, I can actually show in the header if I, oh, it's just showing high res, okay. My apologies. So we're going to go ahead and start the first track. Okay, it'll identify it down here. It says FLAC. It said high res. This was probably one of the new uh, lossless um, title 
you know, kind of replacing MQA sorts of things. And I don't subscribe to that. I just go for, I'm happy with 16441 uh, CD stuff. But you'll see whether or not it's been compressed. And this was actually remixed. And it, back in the day, this album's from like 1967, they did use compression. Or they recorded everybody very loudly. Well, let's scan it and see. And it came up, you know, detected, expected quality of 1644, despite the fact that the header said it was HD. Uh, and again, it came up as correct, but no DC issues on this one. So an excellent file for sure. So that's some of the analysis things you can do with Ottervana, which I think is kind of cool. Um, the other options you have, and I'm going to kind of go into it a little bit here. We're going to go into our settings. Now, I use a shit Bifrost multi-bit that uh, the boys at shit modified for me a couple of years ago, which is very nice. And it shows here, and this is the audio kind of the under the hood look at Artivana. So it shows I'm using Windows 10. It shows what kind of streaming I want to use, whether it's uh, Wasapi, uh, ASO, or I use kernel streaming, which is a higher res. And I can choose how much, you know, what, what uh, you know, super high res, medium, low, whatever for kernel streaming. And then I, it shows over here the capability of my DAC, what it's detected. So 44.1 all the way to 192. And it is, it's a 24-bit 192 DAC multi-bit. And I can change settings and so forth. But one of the kind of the interesting things I can do is, and I have to come down here and click the little lock to take it out of exclusive mode. And now if I want to, I can, on the fly, switch my upsampling. So right now I use a custom setting and I bring everything to 176.4 uh, because I think it, that filter in this particular DAC sounds best. I don't run it maximum 24192. A lot of times I'll just run it at 1644. Uh, I, you know, I had my hearing tested. I can't hear it much above 10K anyway, so it really doesn't matter to me. It all sounds really good. But this one just, for me, just so, for some reason, I think it sounds a little bit better. But I can choose different oversampling rates if I want to. Power of two, device maximum, two times custom. Or if this was a DSD capable DAC, I could upsample everything to DSD. Then I have a choice of which algorithm I use, SOX or the R-Brain. And I just think R-Brain sounds a little bit better. I can choose all sorts of different settings here, most of which I don't understand and really have never heard a difference in. So that's, you know, it is what it is. Also from this particular uh, window, I can do, come down here and I can do my audio scan, but it'll also show if I'm using volume, it'll show the DAC output. Um, it shows, you know, loading and decoding, what's it doing, am I using a four gig buffer with normal polarity? I can use, if I wanted to, add VST effects. And I have one, which I use, it's a, uh, a VU meter analysis, but I can't get it to work, so I don't bother with it. Um, but you, I did, I have on another machine, I use uh, a uh, digital EQ that runs within the original version of Artivana, not Artivana Studio and not Artivana Origins. I have a, an original copy of Artivana 3.5, I think it is. Then I can use volume leveling if I want to use this software as a volume control. Uh, I do have some vintage gear that doesn't have remote control, so I will do that. But anyway, I wanted to kind of show you that audio analysis um, function within Artivana. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, it, I think it keeps the services a little bit honest. Um, and, I, you know, it's just curiosity. I'm a, you know, obviously a mentally defective audiophile. So these things are all important to me for some reason. Anyway, that's that. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, I appreciate your time. And again, if anybody needs any help, you know, direct the comments to me. If you go into my channel and find about, there is an actual direct uh, email address to me. Uh, I do check it periodically and I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have. And maybe I can create another video real quick about those things. So thanks very much. You have a great day.